Hello, this is Ray Motor from ACG, and welcome to another edition of the Hot Seat. Joining me today is Paul of Signet from Juniper Networks. Paul, thanks for joining the Hot Seat. Ray, thanks for having me. Is this your second one? This is my second one. All right, you like it. Well, let's get started. Juniper had an announcement, which was something related to the extension of your NFE portfolio. Right. Right, and it was something related about that you call Cloud CPE. Do you mind telling us a little bit about the motivation, what the elements, and what's new about it? Right. So uh, we announced on November 3rd our Cloud CP solution. Right. Very exciting um, solution to be able to have a service provider take what they've done traditionally in a very manual, uh, physical only approach mm -hmm. and automate it to have a fully scalable service creation lifecycle management system to be right. able to more effectively and more rapidly deploy new services. And we've, as we've engaged with our customers around network function virtualization right. or NFV, We've seen the whole virtualization of that CPE element as a as a key area where yeah. they're looking for solutions, and yeah. so at Juniper we've been working on this for uh, for a while wow. and announced Cloud CP, which really fundamentally builds upon some of our new virtualization or some of our existing virtualization existing, right. capabilities, yeah. mm -hmm. Contrail networking, Contrail cloud platform, right. and added a couple of key elements to really pr uh, present a complete virtualized. CPE environment that we're calling Cloud CPE. Right. And these new elements were Contrail Service Orchestration, mm -hmm. capabilities that give you as a service provider the ability to not only create new services, right. but then in an automated uh, format be able to instantiate or deploy those right. new deploy. services. So a nice server uh, software application to build on top of Contrail Cloud. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we announced our NFX 250, okay. which is our end customer device uh, mm -hmm. CPE, which allows you to not only be able to deploy centralized right. applications, mm -hmm. but also where needed, be able to take the application and deploy it in a distributed fashion so that you as a service provider can deploy it either centralized or distributed to most effectively right, to meet most effective, your service right. provider's needs or your end customer's needs. Yeah. And the last key element was the professional services okay. capability. Being mm -hmm. able to provide services that help our customers, our service provider customers, um, take Cloud CPE and deploy it in a very effective way yeah, and integrate it into right. their network. Now, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's a good timing because you know, managed service in the whole area is an area that needs to be disrupted. Right. So it's important. Now, you, you were talking about some of those features. It seems that there's some obvious benefits, but do you mind reiterating to the audience what do you see as those benefits are? Yeah, I think there's a, there's four key benefits. Mm -hmm. The first one is new revenue generation. Right. As we're looking at moving into this virtualized world, service providers are looking at taking their a core part of what they do, the network, and thinking about how do they further monetize it? How right. can I create new services to open up new revenue okay. streams? So with Cloud CPE, it gives them the ability to more rapidly deploy these applications right. for new revenue streams. Second is it improves their capital efficiency. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by this is instead of having to deploy a significant amount of resources mm -hmm. for a new service that may or may not take off, they can start to more tightly align their investment with their expected revenue. Right, start okay. small, and as that service takes off, right. be able based to match need, that right, growth yeah, exactly sense, based yeah. upon the need. Yeah. And then finally, um, or then the third one is automating the life cycle okay. to reduce capital expenditures. Right. Um, you know, the whole TCO concept is one that every service provider is mm -hmm. looking at. And so being able to automate a lot of this process allows them to start to remove some of that operational expense out of yeah. deploying that service Important. for greater financial benefit. And then um, last, that fourth element is service agility. agility um, right. One of the things that when, when you think about the App Store um, mm -hmm. on, on the iPhone, mm -hmm. um, I've seen metrics that only a small percentage of those applications are successful. The question is, you don't know what application will be successful until you put it up there. So how can we make service providers much more agile right. so that they can start taking risks, um, seeing, you know, experimenting with some new services, seeing if it's successful, and if it's not, yeah. they can fail fast, it's not a, a right. large expense to them, and they can start moving on to new services that might actually hit the mark with their customers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because it's seeing service providers are very risk adverse, so removing that barrier is important. Now, there's a lot of transformation, a lot of new terms for a lot of the carriers, especially you know when they move to virtualization and that piece. What is Juniper doing to help its customers, right? Not only implement or evaluate, but implement these solutions. So in terms of how we're helping our customers, I think that's an excellent question, Ray. What we're looking at doing is really focusing on two main areas. One of the things we have seen is that as service providers are looking to transform their network, 
one of the key capabilities that they're looking to build but don't oftentimes have that same skill set is around this virtualization technology and some of these key elements. And so one of the key areas that we're really focusing and in investing a significant amount of resources is looking at some of the professional services that we're offering. For example, our cloud CPE assessment service, an NFV OSS integration service, a VNF lifecycle assessment professional service, really looking at some of these key services to help our customers transition into this more into this virtualized infrastructure more effectively more smoothly to where we can be along with our partners an additional uh, source of manpower to be able to deploy the solutions as well as a uh, source of educational capabilities for building and developing their internal skills so i think that's one key area the other key area is focusing around some of the tools and GUIs to allow the development of new services. A great example is Contrail Service Orchestration, where we've taken our service designer and given a very powerful GUI capability to that network service designer to be able to drag and drop key elements in to create these service chains or services but then more, most importantly, being able to run those through smart algorithms to confirm that yes, this service can meet the SLAs we're going to be committing to our end customers, or if not, looking at where they might not be able to hit that SLA so that the service designer can go back in and readjust and change that service chain so that they're sure that as soon as those services start to get pushed out to end customers, the service provider is confident that it's going to be able to deliver on the SLA that's going to be expected by that end customer. Uh, maybe you can help me because I'm a little confused. Uh, it sounds very similar to this whole virtual MX and North Star controller and, and these SDN solutions that Juniper has been offering to carriers in the past. What's the different, or, or I should rephrase it, what is it that this solution offers a cloud CP that the other solution doesn't? Well, I think there, there's a couple of key things uh -huh. um, that's critical. First of all is being able to deploy in multiple scenarios. Right, okay. Both a centralized or a distributed or an overlay type an of scenario. Overlay. Okay. Um, there are different um, competitors out there that do have different parts of the solution. Mm -hmm. But what we've seen and what we've heard from our service providers is that many times they'll have customers that even the same customer is looking for a centralized model in one instance and then a distributed model in another oh, instance. Yeah. So sense. being able to have a single solution that has a single operational interface and be able to customize it to centralize um, applications and services where it makes sense and then distribute them where that makes sense is something that we think is very powerful. Yeah, um, the second element is scale. One mm -hmm. of the things that, that we've seen is as we've worked with our customers to start to talk about putting this out for commercial deployments, mm -hmm. scale is critical. Being able to not just do a proof of concept. Right. I'm sure there are many, yeah, many yeah. vendors out there that could do a proof of concept, but then how do you take that and start scaling it up to mm -hmm. ensure you meet that SLA yeah. to make sure that 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 trust that most customers put in their service provider mm -hmm. is positively met. And that scale capability is, is something that we've built out with our whole Contrail infrastructure. And right. we've seen continuously in, in many head-to-head -head engagements where Contrail scales up much more effectively than, than our competitors, yeah. I think, is the second okay. element. Yeah. And then the third element is a very modular open framework. Mm -hmm. um, we've built our solution where we hope that you buy the complete solution from Juniper. Mm -hmm. We feel we have the best solution, but we know that many times customers might prefer to take a more modular approach. Okay. So making sure we're adjusting and, and uh, having open interfaces open, yeah. where if you choose to um, take our Contrail Cloud OpenStack distribution, that's fantastic. Nice, nice. But if you have a, an OpenStack distribution uh, that you've been using and you want to insert that in, you can do it very easily and nice. very effectively because of this modular open approach. Yeah, that's that's very important, that whole openness. Now, I'm going to put you more in the hot seat here. Okay. There's a lot of competition out there. I mean, I hear people touting virtual CPE, cloud CPE from a whole variety of vendors. What's different about your solution and, and what does yours do that the others don't? So I think one of the things we've seen as we've worked with our service provider customers where the cloud CPE solution is significantly differentiated from the competition is in, in three key areas that uh, we've heard from our service provider customers are critical. First of all is being able to support a multi-deployment model. Second is being able to have a proven scale-out architecture. And third is building it all on an open modular framework. And so what we mean by that is, first of all, with a multi-deployment model, one of the things that we've heard having spent significant amount of time with our service provider customers 
is being able to deploy um, solutions not just in a centralized or a distributed or an overlay model, but being able to support all of those. Being able to support a centralized model, a distributed model, an overlay model, but doing it simultaneously. So where you might have an existing customer, say a bank, that prefers some of the applications to be centralized for efficiency, but then maybe security, they prefer to have it on premises so that if connectivity is lost for some reason, they still have that rock solid security that's controlling and monitoring that branch. And so being able to support all of those different deployment elements we've heard from our service provider customers is critical. Um, second is a proven scale out architecture. We've done many proof of concepts and many trials with, with customers and that's a great way to learn and understand the technology. But as we've moved to commercial deployments, one of the things we've seen is having a proven scale-out architecture so that you as a service provider can meet the SLAs that you're committing to your end customers is critical. And what do we mean by that? First of all, that base SDN um, virtualized networking capability, um, having that be a very scale-out proven architecture that can scale up to the demands of your end customers. We've seen in many head-to-head -head deployments that Contrail networking performs at a much better capability as you start to scale up compared to many of our, our all of our competitors. Um, second is being able to design network services. Being able to look at and have a network designer take the different building blocks, very quickly create that new service, run it through an algorithm, test it to make sure it meets the SLAs. If it doesn't, make changes to ensure that it will meet that SLA. And then if it does, push it to the catalog in a very dynamic, rapid fashion is critical. All these adding up to being able to create that scale out architecture so that you can look to take a commercial grade service and deploy it effectively. And then finally, an open modular framework. One of the key capabilities driving forward and one of the tenants around a virtualized networking infrastructure is this openness, being able to leverage off of some of the key capabilities of open source software, open APIs is critical to where service providers want to and need to take their network. Many of our competitors have built their solution around a monolithic proprietary framework. And at Juniper, we built it on core open source capabilities like open contrail, like open stack as well as modular API, open APIs and open interfaces to allow you to bring in new technologies, new vendors, pull out technologies and vendors as needed in a very rapid fashion. And so having this open modular framework so you can leverage off of the true innovation that's being driven by virtualization in the networking space is critical and then being able to pull out different capabilities. So these, uh, cap these critical aspects of having a multi-deployment model, a proven scale-out architecture, and then all built on an open modular framework is critical um, to building a very strong commercial um, scalable solution and that's where I think Juniper excels as compared to our competition. Now, from an analyst point of view, we do see a lot of the use cases and business cases that we're building, Paul, are, are related to virtual uh, CPE. Mm -hmm. But what kind of demand is, is Juniper seeing from its customers? Well, we're seeing uh, significant demand from mm -hmm. our customers. There's a lot of interest in what we're doing around managed services, service creation. Mm -hmm. um, how do we help our customers drive new revenue streams? And so, right. and I think when, when you look at NFV, and what's going on out there. There's a lot of uh, indicators that that virtualized CPE element is okay. one that's probably not the only one, mm -hmm. but one that's of most significant interest to our okay. customers. And that's why we focused yeah. on cloud CPE. And so we've seen great success with uh, working with Orange Business Services, okay. with their EasyGo service, uh, mm -hmm. AT&T's Network AT On Demand announcement. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen uh, a lot of strong interest in terms of what yeah. we're doing, and we're excited about working with, with some of those major customers as well as many others Excellent. to turn this into reality. Yeah, so some reputable accounts there. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you, is this real? Is this shipping? I mean, how far away is this from reality? So we are, many of the components are, are here today. Yep. So right mm -hmm. now, today, we have elements like Virtual MX, our virtualized MX router, right. Virtual SRX, which is our virtualized SRX security platform, mm -hmm. all shipping today. Excellent. Contrail Networking, which is our SDN controller, shipping today. Contrail Cloud Platform, our OpenStack distribution shipping today. Nice. So those capabilities are shipping today. Right. Um, some of the new capabilities that we're adding on, mm -hmm. um, Contrail Service Orchestration, mm -hmm. that will be shipping this quarter, Q4. Okay. Yep. Um, professional Service Capabilities, available this quarter, Q4. Right. And then our NFX 250 um, CPE device will be shipping Q2 of next year, Excellent. so relatively soon. So it's real, well, you're officially off the hot seat. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Ray. With Paul, this is Ray Moda. Thanks for joining this edition of the Hot Seat.